My dear friends in Christ, this morning for the sermon I'd like to begin by relating a little story, and it's one that perhaps you have heard. But this was in the life of Blessed Martin de Cours, and he was a Dominican lay brother in Lima, Peru, and was born in the 1570s. But he became a Dominican first by serving the brothers in the monastery as a simple servant boy, beginning at 15 years of age, because it was at that time Peruvian law that a person of mixed race could not become a professed religious. So Martin so desperately wanted to be part of this community, to be a religious, to devote himself to God, he became just a servant in the monastery. But his life was so exemplary, his humility was so profound, his obedience so perfect, that the monks decided that he must be a religious. And in 1603, at the age of 24, he was professed as a Dominican lay brother. <coughs> but the story in his life that I think is relevant to this morning's gospel happened well after he had been a professed religious. He became very well known for his obedience and humility and also for miracles. His miracles started to attract such attention that his confessor told him that he had to stop. He could not perform any more miracles unless he had his permission. So, Blessed Martin, being a perfect religious, obeyed immediately. No more miracles. But it so happened that he was one day walking down the streets of Lima, where the buildings were very high, several stories, three or four even, and there was a, a workman, a laborer, working on the roof of a building. And this man happened upon a loose tile and began to tumble off the roof. Blessed Martin saw this, he knew that if he, had, he fell that whole distance, he certainly would die. And he couldn't stand to see this happen. Such a tragedy, such a sad thing. But at the same time, he had been told not to perform any more miracles. So in his very simple way, as this man was falling, he said, stop! I need to go ask permission of my confessor to perform a miracle. But here was this man suspended in mid-air, by God's power, of course, while Blessed Martin went to get his confessor's permission. Of course, the confessor said, well, of course, go quickly, go fix the situation. But this is a wonderful example for us of two different types of obedience. Blessed Martin first obeyed his Lord, the God of charity, by performing an act of kindness to this laborer who would have fallen to his death. And second, he was sure to get the permission to be obedient to that lawful authority. Because that is our, our gospel lesson this morning. Our Lord tells us that we must render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to render to God the things that are God's. So first, to consider what are these things that are Caesar's? They are, of course, our temporal duties, civic duties, we might say. Yes, we have to pay taxes. 
We have to obey traffic laws. We even have to pay the speeding ticket that seems to us to be unjust. Especially as more important elections come around, we ought to do our duty to our country. It's a temptation to just throw our hands up in the air and say all of these politicians are corrupt, our country is going down the tubes, what's the point? But Father Plasman, a theologian, when commenting on this morning's gospel, said that patriotism is truly a Catholic virtue. We ought to do the very best we can for our country. We ought to love our country. Of course we pray, and this is most important, but we ought to do our civic duty as well. We ought to respect that legitimate authority, even if it is irksome sometimes. An interesting thing, Christ did not just give us this maxim of doing our civic duty in this one gospel story this morning that uh, we consider. But he rather lived this maxim and he showed it in a very striking way very soon before he was put to death. It was when Pilate had scourged him, when his soldiers had placed a crown of thorns upon his head. Pilate brought him again before the crowd. He said, Ecce homo, behold the man. He was hoping that the crowd would have compassion. But they rather cried out, crucify him, crucify him. Pilate was at a loss. He wanted some means of helping Jesus, some means of, of saving him. He turned to him and asked him, where are you from? Our Lord did not answer. Pilate turned to him again and said, do you not answer? Do you not know that I have the power to crucify you? or else to set you free? Our Lord <coughs> turned to Pilate and said, Thou wouldst have no power over me were it not given thee from above. In this solemn moment, Christ recognizes the authority given Pilate from Almighty God. Here, Pilate is one of his own creatures. And more than that, a creature who is acting unjustly, punishing Christ who is innocent. But our Lord recognizes that authority and obeys. So yes, we must render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's. It is God's will. But even more than this, we ought to render to God the things that are God's. And what is meant here? We know that this duty, of course, supersedes that of our civic duty. If, there, if the two come in conflict, it's an obvious answer which takes the precedence. The first 300 years of our Catholic faith have numberless examples of this. The early Christians were told by their civic authorities, by their rulers, the emperors, that they had to sacrifice to idols, to pagan gods. They could not obey. They knew this, that they must render first to God 
the things that were God's. But what do we owe to God? Simply put, everything. And we know this. We owe our whole self. But how do we show our allegiance? How do we pay this debt? First and foremost, by worship. We worship Almighty God. We do this by praying. In primary school, we learn how do we, how do we pray? How do we give worship to God? And there's this handy little acronym that is used. ACTS. A-C-T-S. Adoration, contrition, thanksgiving, and supplication. We make acts of adoration, especially when we come into His presence in the tabernacle, when we come to Mass. We adore our Creator. We put ourselves at His feet. We realize our littleness, His greatness, how great He is. We adore His majesty. We want to have the best disposition that we can. This is why we are contrite. We are sorry that we have been so weak. We are sorry for all the sins that we may have committed. We resolve from now on to do better. We offer acts of thanksgiving. What do we have that is good that has not been given us by God? We ought to be thankful for everything, for life itself, the opportunity to adore Him. For our Catholic faith, the Mass, the sacraments, we could go on forever listing, listing the things that we have to be grateful for. And supplication. God wants us to ask. He said in the Gospel, ask and you shall receive. This was not if you ask, you will receive. This is imperative. Ask. You must ask. And then you will receive. We offer supplication. We, we know that we are in need. And he is only too happy to answer our prayers. So, act. Adoration, contrition, Thanksgiving, supplication. These are an easy way to remember the, the way in which we ought to pray, the way in which we ought to render worship to Almighty God, to render to Him what is His due. When we consider what we ought to render to Caesar, what are our civic duties, it is permissible, it is okay to do the bare minimum. Perhaps we could do a little better, we could be enthusiastic in contributing to society, but it's okay if we do the bare minimum. It is not okay if we try to do the bare minimum when rendering to God what is His own. As already mentioned, we owe Him everything. We ought to think, what is that first, that greatest commandment? What do we need to render to God? We must love the Lord our God with our whole mind, with our whole heart, and with all of our strength. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.